guys? Uh, welcome to the 71st episode. We're still going strong. Uh, got my uh, co-host back here, uh, Dark Natives. What's up, sir? <clears throat> what up, what up, what up? Um, let me go through my uh, sponsors quick here. We got uh, Ultraspec Cables, Bifutechi, MK, MKServer.ru, which is a Russian site for you out there in Russia. Uh, what's up, Tank? Uh, we got Awesome Smack. We got uh, Deadly Venom, TRMK. We got uh, MKMP, put that back, Pro PC Gaming. Uh, Gamers Edge, which is the place where VSM was held, that uh, if you guys are looking to get your systems or phones or monitors modded or fixed or screens fixed, hit them up. Uh, uh, you can actually find them at thegamersedge.com. Uh, also, you got uh, Mortal Kombat Universe, MK Bible, MK Online. Uh, you got VXG, you got uh, Combat Network, you got The Empire, and you do have your friend Mark Man of it, lo Lovely Mad Cats. Um, you also have. This is not too much shit there. Mortal Kombat United. Um, you also have. Our boys up in Scarsdale, New York, uh, the kick punch block guys, uh, if you're in the Scarsdale area, uh, try to hit these guys up on Facebook or whatever, wherever you can get your hands on them. I mean, at this day and age, everybody should be able to know where to go. Um, we also have Notifuro.com, which is a gamer's clothing line company that now sponsors Long Island Joe. Um, if you guys uh, get a chance, go check them out at Notifuro.com. Um, they got some coupons and whatnot. They got some good clothes. Uh, oh shit, Mr. Melfix X. What's up, sir? Um, and okay, um, I'm also waiting for uh, Mr. Sanford to try and uh, connect right now. Um, while I am at it, let me do this and let me add. How about you let me speak for a bit of here? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get all my commercials out of the way. You got more? Oh yeah. It's here to announce the participating teams at Curly Mustache Battle Royale 2 that will be at NEC 14, December 6, Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Of course, hosted by yours truly, Team Spooky. And of course, first up to bat, we got Team California, Wasai, Filipino champ, PR Balrog, Justin Wong, Marn, and Golden Boy, Neo. Shine on, boy. Shine on. Good. You already got an explosive team right here. Pretty much it's going to be a mix of SoCal, NorCal. Going to represent West Coast this time around. So I'm looking forward to the explosive yet entertaining gameplay by the Western Hemisphere. I'm kind of happy Marn's involved in that, though. That's going to be a crazy wild card. So be on the lookout for that. And, of course, Team New York City. Oh, that is my hometown. You already know Bias. 100%. We got Chris G. The best versus Kid Dynamite. I said versus Chris G, Ray Ray, Moons, Noel Brown, and of course the question mark. For those that don't know, I gave my spot up and I'm going to hold a four man round robin, which of course will be Winrich, Alucard, Insane, and Flux. One of that round robin will take my spot and represent Team New York wholeheartedly. And any one of those people will represent New York in a great way, in a great manner. As long as we win again, it's all good with me, so it doesn't matter. The returning champions, ladies and gentlemen, to Team New York. And we got Team Philadelphia. Stepping in the mix right now, trying to come back, make some noise. And, of course, the captain being Demon Hayo, one of the MVC2 legends. Josh Wong being a legend, period. Leaving top eights whenever he feel like it. Gio Braun, Taz, old school, and Vada. Now, this is uh, Brandon's ch selection. For those that don't know who's Brandon, it's Demon Hayo. And we'll see what they're going to bring to the table to, to represent Philadelphia, man. East Coast in the building. Stand up. The city of brotherly love, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm looking forward to see these players bang out with the best of the best. Let's see who we got here next. Of course, Team Texas. I'm glad that they're coming back because they went for the to the first Curly Mustache Battle Royale, which was that final round. Shout out to, Sh to Larry Shimblanca and his old staff. And, of course, we got Stone Ron Masama, Mr. Consistent, 
Fonzo, Denial, Donke, and Sinks. Now, don't know too much of Fonzo and Sinks, but I'm looking forward to see them play. But, of course, I know Stone, Ranma, and Donke. Donke made some noise up in EVO. And we got Rama, Sama, Stone, two of my favorite Texas players. They're going to come down show some love again, so I appreciate y'all coming through again. Once again, Battle Royale 2 and counting. And, of course, Team Midwest. Shout out to my Midwest family. I was out there in Yumacon 2013. Big ups to them for holding me down. And, of course, we got a captain being, oh, my God, it's Andre. Mr. JDM. Of course, Footwork, Corn in the Building. I forgot JDM is Corn too, sorry, Corn in the Building. Larry LPZ and Zabu. Not sure who Zabu is, but I'm looking forward to see how he bangs out with the best of them. If Andre picked him, he must be a solid player, so that's what's up. And, uh... Of course, we got JDM, one of the one of the solid zeros out there in the Midwest. Footwork being one of the most stylish of Weskers and Dantes. And Larry LPZ with that great keep away. So I'm looking forward to that. Team DMV, hosted by one of the club owners, Unknown, representing Team Control. PZ Poi, also representing Team Control. Ra Ra, DJ Hoshin, and Meep. Now right here, we got a solid team right here, y'all. They pretty much made some noise up in the Battle Royale at a uh, final round. So shout out to them, and I'm glad that they're returning. Because we got Unknown, one of the most solid Weskers and Vipers. Sentinel's kind of ass, but it's all right. PZ Poi, one of the representatives out there. Rai Rai, DJ Hoshin, the most with the potion. And, of course, Meep is cheap. Looking forward for y'all to come through and represent again. Team Upstate New York. Yes, we have another New York team. Why? Because I could do those sometimes. That's just how we do it. And, of course, being the captain, Damus. Plays Hulk, Sentinel, Trish, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Brandon Spear. Eric Delvin. Kid Goggles. That's the ill name. And Josh, 99. Don't know too much about y'all players, but if Damus have that much confidence in y'all to come and bang with the best of them, I am looking forward for y'all showing at NEC 14 at the Battle Royale 2. So I'm looking forward for y'all to coming through. Team Delaware stepping in. I like the fact that y'all guys are trying to step out the box, man. Y'all don't make too much noise, but y'all keep it hype. I seen y'all in the in the in the locals and stuff around Big E's uh, events, and y'all keep it real hype and interesting. So of course we got Bug, Hitman, GFX, Nas. Shout out to Nas. I thought you was from Philly, but I learned in one of the tournaments, the ball battles, he was from Delaware. So there we go. Le Levi and Decent. Once again, don't know much about y'all players, but I am. Looking forward to see how y'all bang out with the best of them at the Curly Mustache Battle Royale 2. Looking forward to see y'all skills. See, maybe y'all could win it. Who knows, man? And now for the teams that I sent the invites to that doesn't have a confirmed team. Here we go. We got Georgia, Florida, North Carolina, Connecticut, and Jersey. Of course, Georgia got a lot of killers out there. You got Roach King. We got Too Much Damage. We got that Vip. We got that Brown Kid. We got a couple of killers out there, and I haven't heard from y'all that y'all going to come to NEC, man. Y'all was, was a part of that classic up in the uh, final round, so please, if y'all want to represent y'all city, y'all town, let me know, and y'all more than welcome, of course. And I throw Jersey out there just because I know Jersey got some solid players out there, and I haven't seen a lot of Jersey representation in a lot of tournaments, mostly just like Master CJ and J. Rosa and Marlon Pie, you know what I mean? But I want to see more. I'm saying I want to see more from y'all. So please let me know if y'all want to be a part of this classic. North Carolina, when I won the TFC, I actually played a couple of great players in tournament and in casuals. And y'all have a lot of talent out there also. So please, I'm throwing this invite out there. If y'all want to join, please let me know. And I will happily put y'all in the bracket of all these killers right here. Florida, owned by, of course, the world champion, Flocker. The man with the most powerful chocolate that's in the world. Could walk through snow, rain, everything. Um, Y'all was a great representation last year. The Curly Mustache Battle Royale. Well, I mean this year, excuse me. Yo. That final round. And I would like you all to represent again. So please let me know. And I'm throwing a friendly invite out to Connecticut. I don't know how much has been banging out there in terms of, of Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. But I would love for y'all to come and enjoy the, enjoy, enjoy the classic. Alright, so shout outs of course to Big E Gaming, NEC 14 to letting me have this at NEC 14. 
Uh, I'm really trying to change the game of, of the team tournament. You know what I mean? I think team tournaments is a great element to the to the competition that is Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 in any fighting game, really. But I'm really trying to evolve that so it can reach new heights and we can have some more elements to watch. And, of course, shout out to all the teams that's coming through. Of course, California, DMV, which is D.C., Maryland, Virginia. Team New York, of course. Delaware, Philadelphia, Texas, Team Midwest. And upstate New York, thank y'all for participating. Y'all will be part of this classic, and I hope that y'all ready for this because there's nothing but killers in this Battle Royale, Curly Mustache Battle Royale too. And, of course, shout-outs to all the Warriors that supported me. And I hope after I release this video that y'all will hype this up even more. Remember, folks, this will, be, this will go down on Friday at 7 p.m. So please be there early enough. Maybe get some warm-ups, but pretty much... To sign ups and just to get everybody situated so we could get something so we could get this going and make it run smooth. So this be your boy IFC Yikes. Please follow me on the Twitter for more updates. YouTube, Yikes is IFC. For those that are keeping an eye on my YouTube, yes, I will be putting more content from here on out. I've been on the lazy side of things, but I'm a little more awake and I will be on it for the next year. And of course, follow me on the Twitch page, twitch.tv slash IFC Yipes. And there you have it, folks. Please, peace and love. And be safe. All right, guys. Um, once again, like I said, next, uh, Mr. Yipe said, uh, Saturday, uh, Friday, 7 o'clock. And uh, let me get these guys back in. And all right. Now, I got Mr. Natus. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Mr. Sanford, you there? Yes, I am. Okay, beautiful. So you're uh, repping, uh, you're repping uh, Team New York in the Marvel, huh? Me? For, yeah, for the curly stash. And uh, you talking to me? Yeah. Am I repping it? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> no. <laughs> nah, I'm not a Marvel team player. <laughs> All right, let me turn the mic over. To, let me turn the mic over to Natus for a little bit. Um, I have to actually take another piss. I drank a lot of <laughs> shit on the way home. Um, I got people asking me questions. How's retirement? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Are you retired? Yeah, I'm still technically retired. Tonight was uh, a special occasion night where I was actually able to get on. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, I've been working evenings for this week, and then I go back to my, my daytime starting next week. That's life as, uh, you know, when you move up in the world, you things change and stuff but uh it's actually good to be back james go take your piss all right good <clears throat> um a few things people got questions uh hit them away um i'm still you guys i don't know james has noticed said this before i'm still involved with the show it's just basically everything's behind the scenes stuff so i'm still basically getting stuff out on youtube and promoting and trying to push things out there and stuff like that so i'm still involved it just you just guys don't see me come on the show because I, I literally just can't do it. I times and work and stuff. I, it, it's not possible anymore for me to do it. It just so happened this week. I was able to, so that's what I'm on. So every now and then you might see me pop on once in the blue and, you know, come on and talk with you guys. And, uh, I know I've been missed and everything like that, but I just, I just can't come on here 20 every week anymore. So um, with that, um, we just saw the curly mustache video. I'm actually hyped for that. I didn't know about the, uh, Battle Royale 2 going on. Um, when is NEC? Uh, Sanford, is that like this weekend, next weekend? I forgot when the fuck it is. I, I, I believe it's in the... December 6th. Yeah. The 6th? Yeah, 6th yeah. to the 8th or 9th, whatever comes out. So that was Sunday. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I'm definitely looking forward to that. I actually have some information about uh, the Philly Mustache Dash exhibition for the fifth person on the East Coast team. Mm -hmm. I have some information about that. I talked to Gags a few days ago. Wait, hold on. So, someone's mic is really loud. I, James, I think it's yours. Yeah, it was yours. Go ahead, Sanford. Yeah, I said I had some information about the curly mustache um, invitational. You know, the one that is supposed to be going down for the fifth person on the East Coast team. Uh huh. And um, as of right now, it was supposed to be Flux, uh, Winrich. So it's Flux, Winrich, Insane. Who was the other person? Does anybody know? 
it, it said it in the video. Chris. Chris. Chris G? Is it Chris G I do it? No, Chris G's the automatic spot. Okay. Yeah, Chris G's the captain. Yeah. So, it was, um... It was four guys battling for a Yipes' spot. It said it in the video. Well, whoever the fourth person was, I think it was Bones. Was it Bones? Ray Ray, Moons, Noel, Chris G. That's the, the team. So, yeah. okay, so the other person has to be, let me see, Flux, Insane, Winrich, and, uh, damn, Unknown? Was that the other person? Well, anyway, the fifth person um, that he's going to throw in there is Dragon God. Well, he just said he was going to battle it out with a round robin for the four guys to battle for the spot. Yeah, I know, but he's going to add another person to battle in the, in the, uh, as well. The oh. So the fifth person is Dragon God. Okay. Damn. So um, I don't know who the fourth person is. I was trying to. Alucard. Information. Alucard, okay. Well, so then it's, it's those five. Should be pretty uh, OP. So, and everybody has to play each other. It's a round robin, and whoever has the most points at the end wins. Which means whoever wins the most is going to be the person that is taking the fifth spot on Team East Coast. Damn, that should be a pretty OP team, man. Yep, and uh, it all goes down Friday. So, if you want to watch that live, you have to be at any seed that Friday, not that Saturday, that Friday. Friday at uh, 7 o'clock start. So that yeah. actually is for all of you out there to get the exact. It is the 6th. So December 6th, guys, 7 o'clock, Curly Stash, Royal Battle Royal 2. Yep. Hosted um, by yours truly, IRC Yes. Yeah, I'm definitely hyped up. I, I love seeing the Battle Royals. I want to watch that as well. But um, on to another topic, uh, if you don't mind. Go ahead, shoot. Um... You know, I I was challenged by a uh, PR Rob the other day for Street Fighter Four at uh, NEC as well. Okay. I'm supposed to be playing him in something called um. Forgot the rules. What what do they, what are they called? The uh, some the the Sapanga rules. You know, they had the Sapanga League where you had to win by two points. Yeah. <clears throat> so I have to play PR Rob on the first of seven. I don't know what time. But it will be happening in NEC. First of seven, me versus Eduardo. She fight a four. Be there. Do it's you know which down. day? I don't know, but it's going down. Okay. So I accepted this challenge. Um, fair enough to give the guy some credit. He uh, is the most consistent player in the United States right now in the in the in that current game. Um, I think he's proved that evolution that he's been consistent i have been online saying that you know i would like to play these players in long sets i i personally feel that i should be up there as well it's just my tournament places and majors have been poor um i'm not going to make any excuses as to why that has happened i have came up short in performing at the highest level that eduardo has and i have to credit him for that for being so consistent but I do feel that my skill is is there. I don't feel that my person should judge me as a, as, a, as, a, as a character of skill. I believe that I have the ability to play the game at the highest level. I do lose, and I do get salty. I do get mad, you know? And a lot of people get mad, you know? But since I'm as known as I am, it's more apparent that I get mad because people pay more attention to my anger rather than my sh skill. Some people pay more attention to my skill rather than my anger. It all boils over to, you know, what people believe and what people see. So at the end of the day, you know, we're going to put on a great show. I, um, the loser has to take a shot at 151. <laughs> hmm. that's, so, that's the winner in my book. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're going we're gonna to do that. You know, he's going to personally take me there. I'm going to personally take him to the bar to do that. And uh, it's going to be fun, man. I just wish that more players stepped up to the plate, you know, to battle other players, top players in the country, to make things a little more interesting rather than just being me and him. Because I've been saying for weeks that this community needs rivalries. 
is there is there any money on the line? Yeah, of course. Okay. Do we know how much? Well, me and Ed really haven't discussed, you know, that, but there are side bets as you know you would expect. Okay. And um, that's going to be that. In terms of the community, as I was as I was saying, I feel that the community has become very lazy, lazy and complacent with the way things are. I believe that Ed challenging me was a great move, not only, not only on his part, but the, to support the community, to give people a show, rather than it just be a tournament with no exhibitions. Um, I'd say Yipes has done great for the Marvel community. He has put forth his curly mustache at a huge event like NEC, which is hosted by Eric, um, and it will be a success. It will be an absolute success. I think he's doing great for the Marvel community and putting his ego aside by not competing as well. He's letting people shine and get burned, and he's letting people do their thing. I think it's going to be a great success. I think this should happen more for Street Fighter 4. It has happened for Street Fighter 4 on East Coast, you know, with Team Pi doing their exhibition matches. I played Smug the Beast in the first of seven. I played Chin 341 in the first of seven. I also played Poem in the first of seven, if you've been watching. Zeus has played me. I've played a whole bunch of people. Krishi has also played Chin in the first of, first of ten. Joe has played Chin in the first of seven. I mean, first of ten, which was a classic first of ten, might I add. And it was held in New York City, you know, and we're trying to make the community better. We're trying to we're trying to make our scene here grow. We can't do much for Cali because we're not in Cali. But for New York City, we are trying to make these players grow. We are trying to, to, to make the scene grow. We are doing the best that we can to do that. Bum, you know, he has his sessions at his house for Marvel. He has some sessions for Street Fighter 4. He has been great in New York. He has done a lot of streaming. He has provided a lot of content. He has had a lot of players over there to, to, for the growth of the scene, for the growth of the community, for the growth of New York City. And so has Team Pie. He has held, you know, Andy has held sessions after sessions after sessions for months now for Street Fighter 4. So Marvel and Street Fighter 4 is being played in New York City. If you are not leveling up, that is because you are not showing up. Oh, yeah, without and a doubt. That's, 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 what it, that's, that's the bottom line. And. You know, people got jobs and personal lives and whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, if you really want something, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get it. You know, you're gonna get when it. I hear people. I mean, look, I, you know, when I've me and Nate have gone back and forth with this as well. Um, you know, I've been in the last, you know, whatever it is that I've been back to this scene. You know, I've been to about thirty some auto tournaments, knowing I'm not making top eight. You know, no one to making top eight, and you know I'm gonna toot my horn because you know what, nobody else does. So, fuck it. You know, I, I work, <laughs> I work 16 hour days. I come home one day a week, you know, discussing what we, we want to talk about on the show throughout the week with various people. I go through every episode after it goes up, and I watch the whole thing as much as everybody else does. I right. watch it. I read the chats. I see what people are saying. Um, you know, and I still, with all that, plus going through a divorce and all the other good shit in my life right now, and I still manage to get to events. You know, I mean, life throws a lot of fucked up things at you, but, you know, if this if this is going to be your quote-unquote salvation in, in, in your everyday bullshit, make it that. If it's going to be the career that you want to chase, um, whether it be a pipe dream or a reality... Then mm -hmm. make it that, but you got to put the effort in to do that. Um, the events aren't going to come to you. Um, so especially, you know, and I understand, you know, when you get out to the Midwest, there ain't much out there. You know, right. you know, so it's like you're either going East Coast or West Coast. You know, maybe this year you pick East Coast tournaments. Next year you pick West Coast tournaments. Save your pennies for, you know, for Evo. Um, but make, if you don't make the effort to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you really can't sit there and say, well, this is bullshit. You know, why is Sanford, you know, getting recognition and, and PR Rog and Justin's? Because they go. They do their exactly. thing. And I understand, you know, people say, oh, well, they're sponsored. They're sponsored. So what? You know, mm -hmm. you know, we there was nobody in the arcade era that was sponsored. 
Yeah. You know, you went to, you know, and we traveled. I traveled more in the arcade days than I did here. I used to get in a car on a Friday or a Thursday night and drive to Chicago for shits and giggles. Yep. Just to go, just to go pay people in the arcade. It wasn't a tournament. It was, you know, a car full of like maybe 20, 30 guys. Not even that many. Correct myself. Maybe mm-hmm. five or six guys. And we drive, you know, we do a 12 to 12 hour drive straight out there. Get out of the car, go to the arcade, never get a hotel room, none of that bullshit. Get out right. the car at 8 o'clock in the morning, stay in the arcade till midnight and drive back home. Exactly. And the thing about it is, people say, oh, they, you know, they, they're sponsored and, you know, they get to go to all these tournaments. But you got to think about it like this. They had to pay dues to get sponsored. They didn't just get picked up, you know? Yeah. These players... They, they've been, the sponsored players have been playing for fucking years, man. They've been, Justin Wong has been in this scene for 14 years. Ricky Ortiz has been in this scene for 14 years. PR Rock has been in this scene for now four years, and he has placed incredibly, incredibly well. He has proven himself worldwide against international competition and Americans. He has beaten over, he's beaten everyone. So he deserves to be sponsored, you know. Uh, look, even and, even Sherry, guys can yeah. say whatever they guys can say whatever they want. She's been here, she's yep. been here. She's she's going to events now. I'm not look, you know, and I see, you know, I see Albino saying, you know, you know, I understand, you know, there's shit that's more important than tournaments. Mm-hmm. But you're also not the one that's out there complaining. Well, why ain't I getting sponsored? You know, I mean, I mean, you keep it a hundred albino gigonosis, so it's like it's not like you're sitting here going, "Well, why aren't I sponsored? I I like to go to events." No, you're saying I I chose A over B, and you're not going, "Well, since I chose A, I still expect to have the same say as the person that chose B." You know, priorities, you know, are, are good, but you know, games never gonna and justice says it, games ain't gonna replace school work, you know, everyday life things, but. Again, I repeat, you guys are not the ones that are out there saying, you know, uh, I should have this and I should have this. You guys actually have a comprehension of that. As much as people want to turn around, um, it was funny because for the last two days I've been going through videos of just people talking shit, whether, you know, pertains to me, (laughs) you know, that that pertain to me, um, you know, the the Twitch days, should Mm -hmm. I say, and... uh, you know, I just tell them, oh, shut the fuck up. Get a, get a, fucking, get a grip on fucking life. You don't like it. You, you don't like the Homeboy Tyson video. Eat a dick. Make one about me. I don't care. I'm not going to cry. But, you know, I do what I do. Why? Because that's what I want to do. And right. there ain't no pissant that's going to come running around here that thinks, you know, and I'm putting this out there. To everybody out there that's talked shit. I don't give a shit whether you're the little fucking jerk off at NeoGAF or if you're fucking the, the quote unquote Illuminati motherfuckers or if you're a commentator or if you're a fucking a tranny, straight, brown, green, blue, purple, pink. I don't give a fuck about anything that you think. It's all, it all comes down to I do what I want because I enjoy it. The people that come to this show, which I've, heard, I've listened and read tweets over the last couple of days, all the tweets... Oh, you know, they're just a bunch of dumb shepherds that follow them. They're encouraging them. You guys ain't done nothing for the scene. You know, the yeah. scene. The way I look at this scene right now, it's grown to this level on its own. I don't want to hear, the, you know, Jeff Bailey or the Cannons or Mr. Wizard or, you know, Alex Vi or any of these people say, we made the scene what it is. No, you didn't. The scene's mm-hmm. growing on its own. Just like, you know, to spin the subject a little bit, because I know you were chimed in on it. Um uh, mm-hmm. The FGC hot girl list, hot game list, guys list. Oh, all that my stuff. You know, What the fuck? Yeah, it was apparently a, 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 a hot girl list. You know, and I, uh, and I like I like Mark, man. You know, he's a really cool guy. But, you know, in my opinion, he kind of stepped in it trying to wear the white hat. And, you know, hey, everybody, you know, it's like, dude, relax. You know, mm-hmm. has, has this society become so pussyfied? that it literally has to turn around and critique everything. And the minute you turn around and you say, well, I don't agree with it, you get labeled, you know, Mm -hmm. homophobic, womanizer, you know, whatever it is. And it's like, how about the fact that I just don't like the way you think? They labeled you James MK. What's that? I said they labeled you James MK now. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, so it's so it's like you know they they're going to label you either way, guys. So do whatever you want as far as what you think, whatever effort you think that you want to put in to make this scene grow. Nobody can tell you what won't work because it ain't been done. Mm -hmm. You know, this scene is a new and growing scene, and it's just like life in general. We're gonna fuck up along the way, big time. We already fuck up. I mean, you know, between like I said, my homeboy Tyson video and the Aries, you know, the the the, the Capcom drama that went on with him, you know, um, lots of things, the cross counter stuff. Um, we're gonna fuck up. We're learning along the way of what and where the where where we as a community draw our boundaries um, mm -hmm. between right and wrong at the same time, trying to keep the hype. Um, I watched a video today, and I believe it was called The Hateful Gamer, was the gentleman that was talking. He was an old school guy, and he was talking about the scene. He talked about the the Aries thing with uh, with Super Yan. And, yeah. you know, look, I, I'm not making light of it in any way, shape, or form. And she hasn't either, and it's not something I want to keep bringing up. But motherfuckers need to get balls, you know, in, in this community. You know, I'm I'm almost ashamed of to be a part of it. Yeah, but that's why you know, <laughs> and it's funny because you know when Natus and I started the show, you know, the whole point was to give the the unknown person a voice, mm -hmm. and you know, since the beginning of it to now, it's kind of morphed every couple of weeks into something a little bit different, you know, whether it be the guests or, you know, the players that are coming on or originally we were part of, you know, we were, we were before I was cast out in, in the test your might realm. Um, you know, it, it's said that everybody wants to be a sheep. Nobody wants to lead. Nobody wants to lead. You know, I've watched, I've watched uh, sites like Test Your Might who were front paging us and, you know, always hyping us up. Why? Because I had Kari Tagawa on here or I had I had something that was of interest to them. Which basically just tells me they're another parasite in the scene. That, yeah. you know, they take what they want to boost their hits up on their website, you know, put out that link. And then from that point on, it's, oh, well, he ain't talking about nothing we like about. He's only talking about Marvel today. Um, somebody had hit me up with a question uh, on Ask FM, which was, why do you really hate Ski Sonic? Oh, and, I read that. <laughs> you know, and, you know, like I said, it had nothing to do with what he said to me as a, as a person, but what he had said to me in his drunken state and still refuses to actually acknowledge it. Um, he basically said that the FGC should just be the Capcom and all the other scenes need to go make their own. Like that's just like that's sustainable. This is coming from one of their quote unquote smart people. So <laughs> tell three quarters of the community get the fuck out of here. We just want to do Capcom fucking fighters, and you think this is sustainable? Where you guys can't even get an MLG, you know, and you're stuck in the grassroots scene with, you know, I mean, in another twenty five years you'll have your fifty anniversary, so there'll be another big tournament then. Yeah. You know, and you know that's that's the part of it that. You know, that's that's what needs to be cleaned up. Not you guys in the stream, you know, not you know, not the guys that are trolling on, on Twitter or coming into, you know, other streams and, and talking shit. It, it's no different than somebody going to a baseball game and telling the other team's pitcher that he sucks ass. You know, you're going to kick the guy out for telling a pitcher he sucks. You got paid to come to, a, to, to the to the baseball game. You know, now that all these people are out there saying, well, hey, I want, oh, I just received another Ask FM question. Um, hmm. You know, now that, uh, you know, all these people in, on, in the Twitch universe are basically making people subscribe to them. Um, it's starting to show their true colors. You know, and the sad thing is, you know, they're actually throwing their so-called friends under the, the under the bus for chicken scratch. It ain't even real money, people. I mean, yep. I mean, Natus, you can testify to this. We ain't made, we ain't rolling in the bucks, and we got oh, no. you know we got full screen pon uh, sponsorship. We got the YouTube sp uh, sponsorship going. Um, I just refuse to throw a a subscribe button up there. 
because I feel that, you know, I'd rather be PBS than cable. You know, I would rather just tell you what I think. If you don't like what I think, guess what? That's why there's fucking 16 million other channels in the internet universe that you can actually look up and watch. You know, yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Subscribe, donate, subscribe, donate, subscribe, donate. It, it never yeah, ends. We actually have the option on YouTube to do that. Yeah, I, I just don't... And that's the reason why I didn't put it on iTunes, because iTunes, you will have to pay for it. Yeah. So that's why I have not bothered to put it on iTunes. People keep asking about it, but I, I mean, I'm kind of reluctant on doing that. The, the, the issue is, if you've noticed, um, every Capcom game that has gone to the league has not been a Marvel Capcom game. Yeah. The, cap, the reason for this is, is because... Not to offend anybody that plays Marvel, but they're uncivilized. You know, they they're not. You can't really market a person that is in that scene because they they're loud, they're obnoxious, they curse, and they're, they're unprofessional. You know, if you look at Evolution, right? Last year, I give an example. When Filipino champ won Evolution last year. If you listen to Seth Killian after when he won Evo, Seth Killian was a little ashamed because the crowd was screaming "fucking champ, fucking champ, fucking champ, fucking champ" <laughs> after he won Evo, and Seth Killian was like, "Uh, he didn't know what to say," you know. And things like that is the reason why I feel if Capcom games stay is the main thing in the FGC, that we're not gonna go anywhere. No, unless it's a Street Fighter game, mm -hmm. a cross Tekken game, or another upcoming Street Fighter base game, this community is going to stay the same. Yeah, it's definitely, it, it ain't, look, mm. it, it's going to stay the same for two, one, of two, one or two, well, it's going to stay the same for one reason. People don't want to change. You know, people like to be, you know, and in fact, like I said, this gentleman, I, I forgot the link to him, but <laughs> the, the guy from Hateful, FGC, or whatever it was, you know, basically said the the OG people want to keep that 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 grimy, you know, shit talking, knuckle festing intact, where the newer generation is kind of saying, no, you know, we don't mind going to esports, but at the same time, you know, he he hit on the fact that he didn't like the word esports, which I don't either, um, and he also hit on the fact that, you know, the newer generation wants it, but they still act like the old school people. Right. They're still doing the fuck shits, cocksuckers during the matches, you know. <laughs> but then they say, "But, but I can, but I can be esports if you want." You know, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like when you snuck out of the house as a kid growing up, and then your mom said, "I don't trust you no more. I got to make sure you're in the room before you go to bed every night now." And you say, "No, mom, you can trust me. You can trust me." She's gonna say, "No, look at your track record." Mm -hmm. She ain't gonna say, "All right, you know what? Maybe he finally learned his lesson." They're, the FGC is getting looked at and saying, well, look at the dirt and grime and grittiness that's always been intact with it. Now you're jumping up and saying, no, 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 we could be good. We can act just like the robots at the, the StarCraft or the League of Legends world, you know, mm -hmm. and we could be mindless and have no personalities. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, That's boring. You know, I mean, I, I actually started, you know, I, I didn't tell Nate because he wasn't around, but, you know, I'm putting together a League of Legends team. I'm going to do what Mon couldn't do and make a successful team. Um, so... You know, I actually had to start playing this game. Well, doesn't that mean you might have to actually go to an MLG event? Yeah, I'm allowed. <laughs> I'm allowed to go wherever I want. Nobody's going to keep me out. You know what? I pay my money. That's it. I'm going to the event. Listen, I, I remember the arena event. You got. I, I, I took those screenshots of you being front row. Oh, when I had to sneak in. <laughs> That's so funny. You know, but, you know, my point is it's like I've watched now. I've watched League of Legends events. Dude, I'm sorry. The MLG does a fucking amazing job blowing this stuff up, but it's fucking it's boring. It's fucking boring to watch. To watch a you know to watch a bunch of pimped out geeks who think they're all of a sudden something big because they're making some money, which is fine, but there's no personality to it. It's like watching two cardboard cutouts of humans actually play each other in a game. You know, and the one thing that I think the FGC can bring that they don't, you know, is that extra kick of, of shit talk. But it's got to be done in a way that it doesn't get deemed offensive to others. 
you know, unfortunately, you know, like I said, we live in a world now where, you know, if you fart too loud, all of a sudden you're racist or homophobic, um, you know, but there's a, there is a fine line that has to, that has to be walked in order to actually draw that line in the actual sand and say, okay, we find A, acceptable, we find B, just too much, you know, and I think had, uh, had that line been drawn in the sand, uh, predating me, I wouldn't have crossed that line. You know, apparently, you know, the Homeboy Tyson video crossed that line, and eh, shit, shit happens. You know, it is what it is, you know. Fish sticks and the rest of the Twitch guys could eat my dick because I don't give a shit what they say anymore. Ah, uh, that would hurt, dude. Yeah, well, I don't uh, I wouldn't want them doing that. No. <laughs> no. I would. Uh, okay, all right, let's move on to something else real quick. Well, I actually did have a question for Sanford real fast. Uh-huh. Sanford, since you're playing uh, PR ROG, what is your current like record against him? Because I know you guys played before. My record against Eduardo? Yeah. Um, last year at Winterboro, he beat me pretty bad 3 0 because I didn't know how to fight Fade Log at the time. Okay. And um, that, that was in the grand finals. Uh, I had beaten Snake Eyes. Then I beat. Uh, I beat Snake Eyes. I beat Justin. Then I beat. Kevin in those finals, then I made it to Eduardo in the finals. Okay. And he beat me 3 0 and took the tournament from me. I, I had to the second place. And again, we played at, uh, we played some casuals at VXG, you know. And there's nothing, nothing serious. You know, it's kind of like back and forth. I think he won a little bit more. I'm not too sure. But we, um, we don't really play much, actually. I would have liked to play him more, but. At VSG, we were chilling a lot. Like, we were, you know, playing volleyball with, you know, Kayani and uh, Cherry and other chicks, and we were just chilling out. Yeah, we games like really, the last thing on your mind there. <laughs> we really weren't playing games at VSG, really. <laughs> like, honestly, we, we were, like, ironing dollars in, like, the hotel room. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, like, we, we, were, we were basically, like, trying to catch, like, buffets and, you know, like, um... Like a little get togethers, like not really clubs, but like outside like parties and we were we were really chilling in VHC. We didn't play much. So okay. um I did challenge him for a while now. I said, you know, I wanna I wanna play you in a set. He was like, Yeah, man, yeah, I'll play you in a set, I'll play you in a set, but it never went down because we were always busy. You know, either he was somewhere else or that when we did collide and we were doing something. So it wasn't like we were playing. Honestly, you know, I know a lot of shit goes down online. You know, I we talk shit to each other. You know, me, uh, Justin, fucking K. Red, Kevin, Flash, Eduardo, Chris. Like, we all like talk trash online to each other. You know, but when we see each other, it's not like that. Okay. You know, it's it's not like that at all. Like we're actually pretty cool with each other. So it's it's not like that. It's just friendly rivalry through gaming. Okay. You know, we all do got like little gripes with each other, but there, there's nothing to the point where like we can't be friends. Okay. You know, it's just it's it's basically competition. Um now, yeah. now, is your matchup with him uh character locked or, or what's the case with that? We haven't discussed that. Okay. We haven't discussed that. I would like for him to pick Barog, um, but because he has the best Barog and that's his best character. That's the particular reason why I want him to pick that character. But if he decides to pick Faye Long, then I can't stop him. You know, there's no character lock at this point. Okay. Now, what are you guys' current thoughts on the thousand dollar money match happening in Justice Between against uh, Rico Suave and playing to win? Okay. I don't play in Justice, but I'll honestly say. Man, you were supposed to play. I remember you fucking saying you're gonna play. The reason why I didn't, the reason why I didn't play the game was because, all right, let me let me let me t- let me let me let me let me have a conversation with the people right now, all right? Go ahead. I'm gonna get into something right now. I made a statement on Twitter yesterday saying that you are only as good as your competition. Now I'm gonna explain why. The reason why I feel that you're only as good as your competition is because through your competition. You will only get as good as you need to be to become one of the best players. And I'm going I'm to explain. If you are playing somebody, right? Like, say, like, I live in New York City. I play the 
best players in New York City on a consistent basis, which is Zeus. And this is not to discredit anybody if I don't name you. I'm just telling you what I, my rankings are in New York City. Oh, you better rank me. All right? <laughs> in Street Fighter 4, the best players to me are Kai Minion, Chris G, Zeus, Chin, Smug, Insane, Elijah, Chris Who, Aqua Soak, and uh, whoever after that, Lionheart. Right? Those are the 10 overall best players in New York, in my opinion, in the game. Okay. That, that's not to this, and Poem. You can put Poem in there too. But Poem, the Feet League, they're, they're good too. But those players, I only lose consistently to two of them. You understand what I'm saying? Uh huh. So those two people are Chris G and Kevin. I lose to Zeus, but my tournament record versus Zeus is he's never beaten me. You know, he's never beat me in a tournament. So the only people that I lose to in a tournament consistently, Rico Suave is also a really good player. But the only people that I lose to in a tournament is Chris G and Kevin. So that means that I try my hardest against them because they're beating me the most. Jaron's also really good. Right, but I don't lose to any of those people. I only lose to Chris and Kevin consistently. Okay, that's it. Chris uses Sakura, Kevin uses Guile. When I fight, when I fought Human Bomb at Evo, I beat him first, first to five because I play Chris. Mm -hmm. When I play other Guiles, I destroy them with Sagat. But they're giving me the competition that I need to develop my own skill. They are the only two players that I play that can consistently stop my bad, like shut my bad habits down. They can, they can exploit my bad habits. When your bad habits are exploited to the degree that they exploit them, it forces you to find another way to win. You understand? Okay. It forces you to find another way to win. When you're playing people that are not beating you, you're not going to develop your skill. You're so only gonna. Is yeah? that the problem you're having in injustice? No, that's the problem I'm having in in, in my gaming career right now. Okay. I can't. I feel I can't evolve unless I go to a place that they're whooping my ass consistently, forcing me to step my shit up, which is Japan. So to me, I feel that here where I play at, I can only get but so good because the people that I'm playing. It's not that they're not that good. It's that they're not beating me. You understand? Mm -hmm. So because they're not beating me, I'm not really like stepping it up like that. I'm just staying at the same level. Yeah, you, 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 you've gotten... Uh, I, I don't want to say and complacent, I'm but you, you have, in a way, gotten complacent because of... You, you're you're playing with the top players. It's kind of like how VSM was in the in the MK9 days, early MK9 days. We were just going and bodying everybody at events. We were playing together consistently every Tuesday. You know, we'd go to CD's house or we'd go to, you know, uh, KT Smith's house and we'd all just play for hours upon hours. And we'd go to the events and it's us in the finals. And people are like, what the fuck? And we're like, well, we're the ones that are putting in the work. And, you know, you get to a point where... You're only playing the guys that you play with when you practice. And right, you, you right. kind of get stagnant to it because you're like, yeah, they kind of, you know, I'm beating this guy. And this, you know, we're going back. Or either that or we're going back and forth. You're not, you're not getting introduced to that, you know, to that club of Lang when he came out the first time versus Rocky and just pummeled the piss and shit out. And you were like, what the fuck was that? You know, it, it's the same exact thing. You know, Rocky 1 and 2, Rocky got lazy over the years, you know, got used to the lifestyle, said, hey, nobody's, no challenges left. And then all of a sudden, yeah. you know, here comes Club Lang, who's hungry as a motherfucker, you know, killed his fucking manager and fucking whooped the shit out of him. And Rocky kind of was like, what the fuck was that? And now Rocky's like, no, I got to chase that down. Mm -hmm. And, you know, same thing with the scene where, you know, you've been playing, you know, the Yipes, the, the Dominions and all these guys for so long. Even the guys over on the West Coast, technically, like I said, you look at the grand scheme of things. Is it really, you know, the East Coast, West Coast rivalry is there. 
but you know there isn't as hardcore of a East Coast West Coast rivalry in Japan. They're unified to play America. You know, Korea is unified to play America. Now they have their inner. In the, they, I'm sure they have their inner rivalries as well. Um, but you get to a point where, you know, this has got to be put on the grand stage. And if you're not willing to step up your game to be on that grand stage, you're gonna get eaten up. Mm. You know, it's like it's just like when you play baseball. You know, you play baseball in high school. You try out for the team. You get picked up. That's it. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know, you know. But now the best of the kids on your team, maybe one of them gets to go and play college ball. Now, when you get to the level of college, you just weeded out all those, well, you know, I had a choice between playing the tuba for my high school band or playing baseball, and I chose to play baseball. I'm not really that much of a baseball player, but it's, it's fun. They're weeded out now. So now with the college level, you're taking the best of each team and putting them together. Now, once you go, you know, the next level after four years of baseball in, in college, maybe you go to the minors. Well, now they just took the best of the college players and put them into the minor leagues. So now your your pool of of shitty talent gets weaned out. Mm. You know. Mm. So you know, with you, you know what I see is right now, the way I see your crisis right now is, you need that that challenge. You know, you need right. you need Club Alang to come out and punch fucking Triforce in the mouth. <laughs> 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 and Triforce say win, win, win one for the Empire and then pass out on the floor. You know, but uh, you know, it's it's that's what it's coming down to. And you know, a lot of people in this scene, like I said, this kumbaya mentality, they don't have that in them. You know, I listen to and I have nothing against the kid, but I came across a video today from Banana Ken saying, you know, the OPC job, just shut up and play the game. Okay, I agree with that. Shut up and play the game. But if you don't keep it interesting to people outside, like me, I'm never going to be on your level. I'm realistic. You know, I don't put the time in, you know, and I tell everybody the same thing. That's all, that's all that separates me from you. Mm. It's, the, it's the time I put in. I could still, you know, I could still jerk off in 13 seconds, be done back in bed smoking a cigarette and fucking wrapped up, cleaned up, and all ready to go fucking nighty night. You know, my fingers still work to push buttons, nope. you know, and I don't put in the effort. I mean, I literally sat with Injustice, for example, and I sat with Injustice for, I don't know, maybe five times I actually played it. I think mm -hmm. I did about eight of the Star Lab missions. I, I looked through the, uh, the Tom Brady guide, fucked around a little bit with a couple of characters. And then I was just like, you know what? I just don't have the time. Now, when I go to an Injustice tournament and get fucking blown up 0-2 and, and fucking flawless, I can't bitch at nobody. It's me. You know, I, mm -hmm. if I want to compete, I got to at least play the fucking game. You know, so, you know, it's... <laughs> Why does it always go back to jerking off? Because I'm good at that. I'm still a pro. <laughs> I got that shit down to a science, man. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, not enough people in this scene are hungry for that. You know, I had actually put up um, on YouTube, you know, I don't know if you noticed, Natus, I put up the old, yes, the I old videos. I saw that this morning. You know, um, yeah, one of them got flagged. Did it? Yeah, the you had the, the tri yeah, you, you had the fucking music I, on it. I acknowledged it. As long as you acknowledge it now, it's okay. Yeah. Well, listen. I wanted to... Um, Are you going to answer my question? <laughs> about why I don't play Injustice? Yes. Um, That's why. You know, that's part of partially the reason why. People, they... They really haven't tried to teach me the game. You know, I don't I don't know how to play the game. I, I know a little basic things, but um, it also has to do with me being lazy. I don't go to Bump's house to play in sessions because usually there's a session for Street Fighter 4 where I can level up in that, and I, I go do that instead. I haven't really tried to pick the game up. I've been lazy about it, and uh, that's my fault. I blame nobody but me. As to why I haven't got good at Injustice. I like Injustice. If I played it, I'd play Aquaman and I'd play Wonder Woman. But I don't play the game because I've been lazy about it. Okay. Now, so what are you guys' thoughts on Rico Suarez playing to win for the money match? Um, to be perfectly honest, I am going for Rico because you know, I'm cool with him. 
I, I'm going for Rico, but I think I don't know. Like, it's, 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 I just want to see it. <laughs> I hope that's like here on the mainstream instead of not on the I, side I stream. It, Since like, it being a a, a, a hype up money match, there that's been they've been going and heated back and forth. This all originally started with some shit that happened. At, what? Wait, 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 what the heck? Mm-hmm. The TFC. Mm-hmm. I think it's where we right, originally right. started, where they almost got into a fight with each other. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been going back and forth for now. We're actually having a money match at NEC. Uh, James, I've what heard do, about what, that. Yeah, James, what do you think about the money match? I mean, the, the honestly, I, I hate to sound, you know, especially after just giving a whole speech about, you know, being hungry. It seems, you know, a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no chump change. Mm-mm. Um. But I think the game, you know, and I, I'm sorry to say this, but I think the game itself, because of its lackluster performance, um, has kind of taken the, the wind out of my sail for Injustice. So I really can't say anything without kind of being biased towards it. Um, I mean, I've, I've streamed through all the, the Test Your Might uh, site info for Injustice and looked at things. It just doesn't, I don't know, man. It, Injustice just didn't captivate me like the MK9 scene did. It just didn't do it for it you. It just didn't do it for me. And I don't know if it's gameplay related or the fact that I'm a Marvel fanboy over a DC fanboy. Um, but it just never grabbed me in a way where I was like, wow, you know, I, I really want to blow this up. You know, where, you know, maybe that, maybe I'm a bit guilty of that. Like, I should, you know, quote unquote, take one for the team and still do my part of making cantaloupe videos and picking on people. But it just, it didn't uh, give me that energy to do it. Okay. So, I mean, hopefully, you know, something like this can actually, you know, bring it out a little bit more. And, you know, unfortunately, like I said, I think these guys got to, uh, um, they got to blow their own scene up. You know, the James MKs of the world is not going to be walking around the like Johnny Appleseed with cantaloupes in my pocket, you know, every time a scene needs to get blown up. Right. You know. Well, since, well, since you're saying that they got to blow up their own scene, what are, what are your thoughts on uh, on Darth Farmer posting up for Mr. Fantastic Challenging Emperor Theo? Um, I like that. You know, I like that. I wish these guys would come to an outlet like this rather than just keep it on the forums. You know, this... It, you know, shows like this, I look at and say, we're one step above Keyboard Warrior because <laughs> you actually get to actually hear the person, mm-hmm. you know, and you can tell, you know, if me and Stanford are trying to blow shit up and, you know, I'm saying I'm going to fucking smack the shit out of fucking Sagat, you know, and he says, oh, yeah, motherfucker, I'm going to blow up. I don't even know what fucking cheese ass character you think you're going to use, you know, and, and we go back and forth. We can feed off of each other. And, 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 and like he was saying with PR Rock, you know, yeah, there's that, that competition, you know, but at the same time, you know, when the control is down, they're out having a drink together. You know, right. that doesn't mean that the, the hype is fake. You know, it isn't, you know, like people like to say, oh, you know, this ain't the WWE. It's not, you know, the will, the will to shit talk and not want to shoot somebody, you know, is, is... You know, not a good thing. But the fact that, you know, guys actually get thirsty to, to each other and want to beat the shit out of each other in the game, you know, is a good thing. Yeah. You know, that's why you got, you got, you got another rivalry going on. You got South 87 who called out the entire fucking East Coast. Did he? Yes, he did. He called out the fucking entire East Coast. Who's well, he look. meaning? Cause he's actually teaching me League of Legends. I don't know who's he meaning right now, but he called out the entire fucking East Coast. I gotta go find that out. Yeah, I gotta. Yeah, find there's, that out. there's a th- thread on TYM with him calling out the entire East Coast. Who? Uh, South 87. He's a guy. Man. Him and his brother are uh, two twins from Arizona. That uh, you know, we've had our days of words back and forth. Um, but they, him and his brother are cool cats. They just, you know, they're hungry. They're Arizona guys. You know, in a scene where, you know, there's not as big as New York or, or California's, you know, they, they, they took the initiative, and this is like what you were saying earlier, Sanford, they created their scene. Mm-hmm. 
they went out and made, they said, you know what, we can't keep going to Arizona, from Arizona to New York or Arizona to California. We've got to make a scene here. And since then, they've built up the scene. You know, you've had Detroit Ball and the two brothers, uh, King Hippo, which is uh, Claude Von Stroke's favorite friend. Um, <laughs> you know, and a bunch of other guys that they've, they've built up, basically, to, to build their scene. So, I mean, i got to give him props. And, like I said, he's trying to put the fire in people's asses. You know, I can't judge on this game simply for the fact that it's just not my game. You know, I'm waiting for MK10 or, you know, or, or, or Ultra right now. Well, we got Killer Instinct coming out in two weeks. Uh, I'm not even thrilled about that either. I'm about as thrilled, uh, as, I, that. I, I'm, I'm I'm, a, I'm, I'm about as thrilled as that as I am for Injustice. I plan on playing it. It's a playable game. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be an online game, though. Oh, I got no problem online. I'm gonna play I'm online. Saying, I play I'm online. just saying, it's an online game. It's not a tour. It's not a tournament viable game, contrary to what people think. You know, you, 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 like I said earlier in other episodes, you're killing half of your following because if half right, gets right. PlayStation and half gets Xbox, well, that's half that never gets to play except the tournaments, or if they go to their friend's house who has it. You know, how good can those people really get? You know, and that's and that unfortunately is the problem. Dive kick on PS4 is greater than KI. Oh God! Wow, <laughs> someone actually said that shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's fucking. I'm sorry, dive kick his ass, dude. Fucking fucking say that, man. You know, but it, but you know, to to put it in perspective, you know, if you're losing half your following, I mean, I'd like. Don't get me wrong. I don't, I have nothing against KI. You know, I have nothing. I mean, I'm one of the biggest Microsoft dick riders on the planet. I love Bill Gates. I would gobble his goop before I grab Steve Jobs Yo, fucking shit. Oh before <laughs> Steve Jobs and shit. You know, <laughs> fucking Apple. Apple's the one that's been fucking me for the last fucking 15 years with phones. Um, but, you know, the point is that, you know, I've had a lot of people say to me, like, oh, you know, you just hate Microsoft. No, actually, it's the opposite. You know, I mean, I like my TV and my fucking, my game, my game console both being... Sony, but reality is right next to where I got my Wii's, my Wii U's, and my fucking my my Xbox. So it's not like I only buy one system. I just don't think overall this. I mean, the game's gonna do well for the system. Is it a selling point for the system to some people? Yeah. You know, I know Junior. You know what, City Junior? You know, come on here anytime you want because reality is this: your little virgin ass don't know shit about making games. You don't know what's gonna sell. You're the same guy that said Injustice is gonna be the the, the greatest game of all time. Do, do you remember me, Tim, saying that, Natus? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, don't make me get on the show and put me down. Come on, little boy, pull out your little <laughs> pull out your little fish stick and come out here and try to fucking put me down. But, well, uh, well, speaking of systems, we do have the PlayStation 4 coming out in three days. Yes. So, mm -hmm. it, who plans on buying it? Uh, well, I'll have mine by next month. And I won the um, Xbox One, so I'll have that at the beginning of next month. You won so one? Where the fuck you won one at? I won one at a tournament recently. Oh, sweet. What about you, James? What? what were you planning on buying both or, or anytime soon or what? Nah, I'm not in a hurry. No I'm, hurry for I'm you? I'm in a hurry. Uh, you know what? I've, I've been the sucker too many times. You know, they're both, I mean, they're both reaching, releasing day one patches. You can't even fucking play a game until you plug the thing onto the internet. That pissed me off about Microsoft, though. Yeah. Um, you know, that's like, you know, there's going to be motherfuckers with no internet walking over to fucking, uh, to Starbucks just to get a Wi-Fi connection to fucking download the first day <laughs> patch and shit. <laughs> Just well, so they that, said PS4 has a day one patch also. Yeah, but you could still play the games without the patch. <laughs> it's actual updates. This actually, when you pull it out of the box and power yeah. it on, with no yeah, internet connection, you can't play no games. Oh, well, well, fuck it. Get, get, get uh -huh. internet. Yeah. I, have, I, have I mean, it doesn't affect me and you, so I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Like after normal. You know, I mean, I'll probably buy one after Christmas. After I'm Christmas? Poor, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm obviously in no hurry. You, you, you dipping? Well, right now is not a good time anyway, what you're dealing with. Yeah, no, that's a whole other issue. I'm actually moving at the end of the month, so you know, there will be no more golden EIB microphone in this house for any time soon. I mean, after eight years of living here, I'm out of here at the end of the month, so I might I just actually... Want to say, Go ahead. Oh, I just want to say real fast, shout out to my EMP brothers and sisters in the chat, little Niana, the C Junior, and... Dexter James was qualified for 
Capcom Cup for Street Fighter Cross Tekken. You know, uh, I'll be watching. Hopefully, you'll do your thing along with Knuckle Dude. EMP is holding it down. And um, I hope to see you all, you guys, soon. What's up? Okay. Okay. Let me do this. I want to bring somebody back in here first. Oh, 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 oh. Something just called, came to mind, James. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> I wanted to talk about, you know, mentalities of players. Because this is something that a lot of people don't understand when they watch these players on stream. Okay. I said this once and I'll say it again. Streaming fucked this whole seat up. Right. Now, streaming, streaming fucked this seat up because players do not feel entitled to be at a tournament to learn. You know, they become complacent and stay at home, watch YouTube videos, watch streams, trying to mimic, you know, what they see online. The reality is you are not going to get the same experience online as you were off. If you play any of these players offline, you will get a better experience and experience in general from playing them. This is something that a lot of people don't understand. You know, they don't. And if they do understand it, they're just too lazy to do something about it. You can go to training mode and you can practice all day long. Combos, setups. It'll make you a competitive player. Okay. It will not make you a great player. In order to be a great player, you have to beat great players. That is the only way to succeed the way you would like to. You, would like to. you are not going to be a great player by playing people or playing no one that is going to heighten your, 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 your skill. You have to be exploited in order to learn how to, how, to, how to work your way around it. I wrote something online that I don't know a lot of people read, but it was pertaining to something like that. Now I want you to listen to I want you to listen to this carefully, okay? I said if you don't punish something unsafe, the punishment is that you miss the opportunity of showing them it's not safe to do it again. Did you hear me? Yep. Yeah, we heard you. And a lot of people they don't do that. You know, they don't they don't practice punishment against people during match, they punish punishing it in training mode. Training mode is not the same as playing someone. There's different millions of type of play styles that a player can have. Alex Valle moves his shoulders when he does his moves. That's a play style. It's very distracting play style, but it's his play style. You know, some players they 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 press fake buttons. They go click click click, but they don't press any buttons to force you to try to jump. And then you get anti-aired. That's his play style. Some people like to do a lot of patterns to make you think that it is a pattern. So you can try to punish it and then catch you when you're trying to catch their pattern. Which is called a form of reverse psychology. These players, they are not experienced to those type of players. Because they don't travel. And they don't play in tournaments enough to experience that to make themselves better. And I think that's a lot of... A lot of the, the, the issue with a lot of players these days is that they're lazy. They're letting streams take over their lives to the point where they don't want to expand their knowledge of the game. They just want to read up on it and watch it. They don't want to actually perform it. And that's just my opinion about the scene right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny. Charisma once said it, you know, right after you said uh, about the streams, he said, reality is, you know, we can break it down further. And, and like he said, the Internet fucked up the scene, you know, not just streaming, you know, you know, to get to the, to the root of everything. It really comes down to the Internet in general, the growth of the Internet has caused streaming to be formed, you know, FAQs of how to do every possible video, you know, regular videos, tutorials and stuff like that where somebody could just download and have access to it. So you don't have to put in the work no more. You know, in, in, in the heyday, it was, you know, go to the arcade and spend your own fucking money or you knew somebody that worked at the arcade that had the fucking key to the machine and threw all the service credits in. It was one of the two. That's how you learned it. You know, you didn't go to Game FAQ and download, you know, a, a, a guide on the character that you want. And even from the conception of the FAQ um, for games, 
it's gone to a new level. Mm. You know, you used to download an FAQ, like let's say Mortal Kombat, for example. It was an FAQ of all the fatalities. That don't make you a better player. That just means if you manage to win, that's the what I mean. You could kill them. You know, mm -hmm. now it's been broken down so much. It's like, you know, you actually got to fucking know. It's like it's frame data and this and that. And it's, you know, every possible scenario versus every other possible you know, scenario of a combo. All you got to do is do this. And, and it's funny because this guy puts it in the chat. He goes, streaming didn't mess up the scene. I'm going to explain why, again, why it messed up the stream yes it did publicize the fgc and made it bigger but it also made people lazier there are more lazier people in the world than actual people that are, are productive it's easier to be lazier to be lazy than productive if you could sit on your ass and get paid you sit on your ass and get paid instead of going out to get paid that's just the bottom line the mentality mm -hmm. of these people is i'll sit back and i'll watch these players and hey, if I play them, then I'll play them. But I'm not going to spend my money to go play them because I don't think that I can beat them. And if I think that I can beat them, then hey, maybe they'll come to my town and play me when they come here. And I'll play them then. Because since I see them play all the time. Because they travel a lot. That's people's mentality. They don't want to go out and get shit done. They want shit to be done for them. That's just the mentality of Americans in general. Now, That's why things is fucked up as it is. Now, EMP Tampa Bison. You know, I see what you're saying. Streaming is giving us an opportunity to establish a scene that can be seen by actual investors. Where are they? Where Man, are they? Tampa Bison disagrees with everything I say. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Where are your actual? Where are your investors? They don't give a shit about. I mean, when are you guys gonna get it through your heads? They don't care about this scene. This scene offers them nothing. They don't give a shit about it. It don't offer them anything. You know, and it's and that's the thing that you know. Instead of everybody saying, you know, look at, you know, look at how the scene's growing and look at this and look at what's going to happen. Look at, actually look at our scene, not from a player's perspective or somebody that wants to see it grow. Look at it as if I was to turn around to you and say, hey, EMP Tampa Bison, give me $400,000 and I'll make it $450,000. You're going to go, get the fuck out of here. For 50 grand more, I'm going to give you 400 grand. I better come back with a lot more of a profit than that. Mm -hmm. You know, so investors are not coming. They don't care about this. They don't care about people. Exactly. They don't, they don't care about people calling each other out. They're looking at the bottom dollar. That's what an investor does. They're yeah. going to say, you know, am I going to be in the red with this or am I going to be in the black? Very simple. If it's mm -hmm. worth it to them, they invest in it. If not, fuck you, see you later. Why do you exactly. think, Why do you think there is so little of a turnout? As far as, you know, companies outside of the scene trying to even get involved in it, you know, and I've said this before, you know, banks could come around and talk to, and reach out to these. If banks were truly interested in this scene, they could reach out to tournament organizers and, as in like, I saw, like I told Sweet Johnny Cage, reach out to them if you have to, you know, where everybody's bitching and moaning about the money that they're putting in, you know, and how much TOs are making. I say, look, I said, if, you know, Chase Bank or Citibank came around and said, look, we're going to set up a, a booth right in front of your event. For every player that signed up that brings us a badge, we're going to give them a bank account, if they don't have one, with $25 in it. Now, you say, oh, it's only $25, but that covers your door fee. Yeah. So, you know, and then and then rather than turn around and shell out cash at every event, tournament organizers would work out a deal with them to direct deposit it to your bank account. Done. Mm -hmm. That wipes out your collusion, your, your, your pot splitting, it wipes it all out because, you know, if me, Kelly, and and Dark Natus agree, all right, you know what, we're going to split the pot, guys. The top three, we'll, we'll get. All right, so I got to be like, yo, Kelly, you, you home? You home, Kelly? I, I keep getting your voicemail, Kelly. Did you get did you get your money deposited yet? Because, you know, I need that, that $13 that you want, you know. And it's like now now I'm just going to say, you know, is it worth, it? you know, chasing somebody down for 20 bucks? Fuck it. Let me just play it out. Yep. And it'll actually stifle some of that which people bitch about, you know. And at the same time, it's going to promote real growth for the scene, not as players, not as competitors, as a fucking a man or a woman. You know, it's going to say, hey, look, you know what? You actually will have a bank account. Now, what you do with it, you could take that money and close, you know, take that $25 after whatever the time is and just close it and pocket the money and be like, fuck it. And then the banks will leave. 
they'll say you know they'll say exactly what you know what a lot of these other people that have stuck their nose in this scene said it ain't worth it it ain't worth the time it ain't worth the effort so I'm just gonna leave but you know if people reach out and actually start trying to grow the scene you guys gotta if you want investors you gotta go out you gotta grab the investor by the back of the fucking neck and you gotta push his face in the fucking scene like it's fucking dog poo and you gotta say this is what you wanna fucking do that's the only way they're gonna come all right. That's it. They're not coming down here, you know, in golden chariots, throwing money out, saying, all right, everybody, here's money, because you guys are just so cool. And I just want to be part of this scene. There's nothing. What does it offer them? You're cool, James. Don't worry about it. I am cool. <laughs> but, you know, this scene doesn't offer them nothing that's that's considered a good profit. You know? Yeah, yes, PJS is still doing injustice, and he's got, like, like 30,000 losses on his account. <laughs> yeah man like i'm i'll be in the lab you know i'll be practicing the games that i particularly play like street fighter across second and stuff and no i should i went to my friend's house this last weekend and you now i was playing yipes and jack gun and i was showing them all of the stuff that i i learned to level myself up and to hopefully give them knowledge about the characters that i use as well and you know, I wanted to touch up on something. Okay. I don't know if anybody's, you know, YouTube James and you have been paying attention to the Topanga League. Yeah. But uh, this guy Wow is tearing shit up with 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 Oni right now. Yeah, I know. Right. Now I wanted to I wanted to discuss something right right fast. Before Wow was in the Topanga League, I had a friend in Japan. Right. He told me about Wow. Um, before the Tamanga League started and told me that while I was playing Oni, which is the same time I started picking up on Well, I've been playing Oni for years, well, about a year, but I started playing Oni seriously recently. And a lot of the stuff that Oni, that he's doing with Oni, I've already known about, you know? So I've known about that stuff before he was in the Tamanga League. And a lot of the stuff that he's doing, it doesn't impress me because... I feel that he could be doing more with the character because I I said at one point that I knew more about the character, but that's not fair to say because he's playing safe against characters that are the, the players that are that are top level players. So he's not going to do the optimal thing all the time. He's going to do what it takes to win. Yeah. So my thing is some of the stuff that he was doing, I felt he should have been doing, and I was ridiculed. I was I was shitted on. I was. You know, I was I was labeled uh, a hater and, 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 you know, oh, you think you're better than him. And listen, when I say a statement, it's not that I'm, I feel that I'm better than him. I just wanted to make a statement pertaining to the character that he's using because I use the same character. When I use Sagat at Evolution, when I use Sagat at CEO, when I use Sagat at VHG, Reinhardt was all on me like yo you should be doing this you should be doing that in this matchup i didn't get upset at ryan i said you know something you're right i'm gonna start doing that because what i've been doing isn't working so therefore i'm gonna do what he's telling me to do to improve my game that's what you call self-development and 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 and, and non-egotistical shit you can accept constructive criticism to help yourself out this guy wow i told people you know, he's not doing specific things with the character that I think that he should be doing. People shit it on me for, for days now about that, saying, oh, you're not on this level. Who are you to say this and this and that, blah, 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 which is fine. I, I, I expect that because he's getting results that I'm not. So that's cool. I'm just saying people should open their minds up more to what I am saying. I'm not saying that I know everything. I'm saying I do know a lot about the character, and I do feel that he's not doing certain things, and some people should listen to me. Like, for instance, anybody that knows Oni knows that when, when Daigo was jumping at him, when Bobochi was jumping at him, when these people were jumping at him, he was DPing with Fierce. Fierce is only 120 damage. Medium punch DP is 150 damage, which is all three hits. He is not doing that, and you get a setup after it. But people don't see that, though. They just see that he's doing the DP, so what does it matter? But if you're an Oni specialist and you're the god of Oni, you should be doing what's necessary with the character to showcase his true ability. You understand? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's, 
that's my thing. So uh, that's all I'm saying. Like, you know, if if he was doing certain things, I'm not going to get into the other stuff he was, wasn't doing. But that's just one example of what he should be doing, I feel. And it's not to hate on the guy, you know. He's obviously a better player than me because there's better competition. That's, that goes back to what I said originally about 20 minutes ago. Your competition makes you who you are. You can't just get godlike on your own. Well, you can, but it, it takes a lot of ass weapons for you to get that way. You have to be exploited for you, for you to, to learn what to do about your weaknesses. Your weaknesses have to be exploited for you to work on them. Everybody has a weakness. The more weaknesses you have, the better you can possibly become. And that's, that's it. Yeah, no, I mean... It, it... Again, this comes back to what I was saying. Your mentality to playing games contradicts with a lot of people's mentalities now. You know, because you come from the mix of old and new, um, you hold on to that old school mentality of the competitiveness, and you're out to beat people. I mean, look, you know, it, it's no, you know, it, and I'm not ashamed to say it. It's it. When I go to the events, it's to fucking hang out, you know, and I'm not going there with that hunger to beat CD juniors and, you know, and dominate an MK or, you know, dominate in Street Fighter. I mean, I, I do want to be, get a couple of matches in Street Fighter, you know, I can leave content with that, but I don't see myself seeing top eight. And that's my, my, uh, being complacent with just being there. Mm hmm. You know, but for the people that are out there that want to actually compete, um, you know, I tell people, don't focus on what I do. Focus on what yourself got to do. Don't worry about James M.K. goes on a show and tells everybody to suck his dick and fucking cup his balls. So what? Does that, does that stifle you from leveling up? You know, does it hurt the scene? No, it brings out the part of the scene that, yes, I embrace. I think it traumatized <laughs> some people from you saying that. Yeah, well, you know. Except for the women. Yeah, well. <laughs> and, and some guys. Yeah, and some guys. <laughs> but, you know, the point is that, uh, you know, people need to really pick and choose sides now of what they want this scene to envelop to. Do they want it to be just... You know, a casual get together like going to a Comic Con where I, you know, your only competition is who's the best cosplayer? Or do you want this to be actual remain competition or competition from the days of old combined with the days of new? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, you know, people, and I've, I've seen people in the stream saying, you know, fuck that esports shit, you know, that's, that's where this biggest problem stems from is, you know, the old schoolers like myself and, you know, the people that want quote-unquote esports to blow up, you know, and Triforce has said that it is coming, dudes, you know, and whether you want it or not, you're either going to be left in the dirt and, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with the grassroots scene if it does get to that point, you know, I'm not Nostradamus, um, but, I mean, the scene as a whole is going to get flipped upside down, mm -hmm. you know, um, all those people that are turning around saying, no, man, fuck that, grassroots, baby, grassroots, yeah, well, when you're a top player and they turn around and they say, you know, top prize is 60 grand, we'll see how much you give a shit about grassroots when you know you can get that 60 grand. Yep. But, you know, very simple. I hear a lot of people say, oh, no, I'm never going to betray the scene. That's because it's easy to say when the money's not there. You know, look at the, look at the look at the MK scene. You know, when MLG picked up MK, you know, I I had gotten so much hate, you know, because I was telling guys, you, you know, remember this is just a temporary band aid. Eventually, they're gonna rip it off, and all you guys are gonna be like, what the fuck? What do you mean there's no arena this time around? Oh yeah, well that's the that's the first step to telling you guys, fuck you, you're not worth it no more. You know, and then after the arena stopped, then the following event stopped. You know, when people are like, oh, I was supposed to get my free trip to New York to play in the arena. I won. I took top eight or whatever, or top four, and I should be going. Not in the way MLG saw it. You know, MLG said, we're not making any money. You know, yeah. I, mean, I mean, raises and fucking Dr. Pepper is not enough to fucking sell the scene. You know, people need personalities. 
you know, and that's that's that is actually the truth. People need to have personalities in this scene. You know, uh, you know, you look at the StarCraft scene and, and the League of Legends scene. Like I said earlier, you could take any person with any fucking ego slash mentality in that scene and put them on top of one another, and that person will not change and say, "Oh, that's a different person." No, they're all the same. You know, their unified geekdom is basically across the board. Yep. You know, so there's no I, separating I it. There's no separating it. What's what's good about this scene as compared to that scene, you know, is is the fact that you have so many people from different walks of life. You know, you got little spoiled boys like Flo. You know, <laughs> you got you got, you know, uh the brothers from up in Michigan, corn, you know, who bring fucking a lot of fucking zest to the scene. You know, you got mm-hmm. loud mouths like myself. You got top players like you. You got, you know, top players like the Justins and all these guys. Everybody has a unique personality. And that's the part of this scene that you cannot lose or you become robotic. You know, and if you become robotic, then why are you doing it? You know, people ask me all the time, well, why'd you really start making games? You know, I I said, look, I said, you know, you do it 18 hours a day for 10 years and come back to me and tell me, you know, why why don't you do games anymore? You know, it took the fun out of gaming. And I'm not talking about fighting game. I'm talking about just sitting down and playing a game like Castlevania or, or, you know, I remember going back in the day, Legacy of Kane. I remember playing Legacy of Kane. And, you know, even when I went to, uh, to Comic-Con this year, I sat with the, the Ninja Gaiden, and I, cr- I spent most of the time crashing the game for him. I said, yeah, let me give you some bugs. And I looked at myself and I go, do I ever enjoy games anymore? Do I really just run around crashing fucking games? Um, you know, because I analyze games to break games. And I also look at games and say, well, what can sell? What's not going to sell? I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm Nostradamus, but I saw the writing on the wall with Injustice. You know, know, and that's because of my background of making games based off of licenses. You know, and I was able to look at it and say, this is going to be a game that is going to do okay. It's going to be partially comprised of people that are casual you know, fighting game players versus comic fans versus the hardcore gamer. And in the end, it'll all work out and they'll make their money, but it's not going to be the blow-up success of like a Mortal Kombat or a Street Fighter. That's true. You know, and because I do that now, I, I am, you know, I'll sound like a cocky motherfucker when it comes to to games in general, not just fighting games. I'm pretty insightful on what's going to do good and what's not. Um, that's why our marketing and sales groups at Acclaim used to actually come to me and be like, well, what should we do for this? What should we do for that? You know, I mean, I was instrumental in doing that goddamn fucking Mortal Kombat down on Wall Street commercial with the kid yelling Mortal Kombat running down the street. You know, um, you know, so it's like this scene has to, uh, uh, the stream, uh, the, the scene has to realize its own shortcomings, but also look at its, its diversity as a way to grow. You know, I mean, people will turn around to, oh, James, you're homophobic, you're this, you're that. Yeah, well, you say whatever you want, you can eat a dick. You know, <laughs> my, my point is, my point is, you know, there's not one person in this scene that could ever turn around except for maybe Ski Sonic mm-hmm. that really said I, I merited, uh... <laughs> yes, I know that. <laughs> James, yeah. me, James, can you check your Facebook? I sent you a message. Yeah, I'm seeing it right now. Okay. Yeah, but um, I think uh, I think in terms of the streaming thing, um, it does give investors something to look at. But uh, I have to agree with Tampa Bison about the players. The players is the reason why things are messed up, and it also goes back to what I said: the players are they're not professional. And it's Marvel is usually the last game that's played at these majors. So, you know, the players, they're, 
you know, it, it creates a lot of hype. But investors, when they look at that, they don't look at it as very professional. Okay. And I feel like that hurts the scene. And with a collaboration of players being lazy as well, they're not supporting the tournaments themselves. I mean, a lot of people are coming to NEC, but there's also another issue that I wanted to address in terms of the majors. There's too many of them. 